There we go. Okay, uh, it's noon, so why don't we uh, get this party started? Jonathan, do you want to do the introduction? Yeah, I do. Um, thanks, everyone, to you that's joining us live. It's much appreciated. Hopefully, some more people will jump on. Um, in this webinar, we're going to be covering a lot of Groundhog, but specifically targeted at three essential marketing optimizations that will make your membership site more profitable. But we will be covering a lot of Groundhog in basically showing those three essential marketing optimizations, won't we, Adrian? Yes, uh, we're going to do uh, a lot of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sharing my screen, but Jonathan, you're going to have to let me do that. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I always forget that. There we go. All right. Beautiful. All right. There we go. Uh, everybody should now be hopefully able to see the screen. If uh, you're having some sort of technical difficulties, just shout it out in chat. Uh, so welcome everyone to the call. I want to thank you for taking the hour out of your very busy schedule today to spend it with Jonathan and I. I am super appreciative. I know we're all super busy and we could be doing other things, but I'm going to do my absolute hardest to make sure that over the next hour, you get an immense amount of value and that you walk away with some actionable insights that will help you make a more profitable membership site, either for yourself or if you're an agency, potentially for your clients. So um, if you've ever had customers log in once, never come back, uh, you had customers cancel because they didn't see the value of your offering. You failed to create consistent engagement with your membership site content, and you've received mountains of support requests. Because your customers did not know what to do after signing up, then you have arrived in the correct location. We're going to be discussing all of the solutions to these common membership site problems. During this webinar, we are specifically going to show you how to properly onboard your customers using email sequences and, and a variety of other techniques, how we're going to decrease member abandonment by using some simple tricks. We're going to show you how to maximize your member engagement uh, by consistently keep staying in front of your customer. And we're going to, if we have time, there is, the, the, we did say three, uh, three funnels that are going to help you out. Those are three. Uh, and if we have time, we are going to do a fourth, but we are going to keep this to a hard hour. So that the last one, how to prevent and reclaim canceled members only if we have time. I'm going to try and get through it as quickly as possible so that we can get all four of them for you as a bonus there. So for those of you who may be on the call who don't know me very well, my name is Adrian. Uh, I am the CEO and founder of Groundhog, which is a company that's been around since 2018. And we help small businesses launch their funnel, grow their list, and scale their business using CRM and marketing automation. Uh, we've learned a lot about businesses and, and the kinds of tools that they use in order to launch their funnel, grow their list, and scale those business. And we try to make those as accessible as possible through our software uh, and through our training. And uh, Jonathan, I don't have a slide for you here. So if you wouldn't mind just quickly introducing yourself and what you do, who you help and, and what you help people achieve. Oh, that's great, Agent. Well, I'm the founder of WP Tonic. We're a digital agency. We specialize in building and maintaining and supporting um, learning management systems for all types of organizations, organizations, one person, entrepreneurs looking to build a successful course business to larger organizations like mega churches, universities, non-profit organizations that are running learning management systems. And me and Adrian also um, do a weekly podcast or two actually, but we do a weekly interview podcast called WP Tonic as well, don't we Adrian? Yes, we do. And how long would you say you've been building membership and LMS sites? I've been specializing in that area for about three years now. Yeah, so, and uh, you've been a part of the WordPress community for uh, a much longer time than 12, that. 12. 12 years, so, yeah. so building sites and, and for the better part of a decade and a little bit. So I myself have been in the WordPress community for around seven years. Uh, Groundhog is actually my, my second company. I had another company called Formlift. I used to be involved heavily in the Infusionsoft Certified Partner Network. 
uh, and Formlift was a result of that experience. And then I took everything that I learned from being an Infusionsoft certified partner and, and being heavily involved in their platform and then made it more accessible for those of us who use WordPress and we don't like having to pay the success tax and the, the exorbitant monthly fees of, of software as a service platforms. So that's how I ended up here. And both of us have extensive knowledge of creating better processes for higher engagement, lower churn, and better customer onboarding for membership. I run a subscription business. Jonathan's built several uh, or, or beyond several LMS, successful LMS and membership sites. And we've compiled our what we've learned from those processes and, and the funnels that we've used in order to make them scalable and, and much more profitable. And that's exactly what we're going to be sharing with you today. If at any point you have questions, uh, this Zoom webinar does have a Q&A feature. Uh, it should be in the bottom bar of your Zoom window there. It says Q&A. You can go ahead and click on that and you will be able to leave questions, comments, concerns uh, in there. We have several sections where we're going to pause, we're going to look at some questions, and we're going to answer them if they're relevant. Uh, and we'll do that live here on the call. So there's no such thing as silly questions. Uh, we are all on this call in different stages of development and different stages of implementing Groundhog, or maybe you haven't even heard of Groundhog before this call, which is quite possible. So if you need to know something or you need a little bit of additional context, then please, please go into the Q&A section and just leave uh, your question there. And we're going to do our best to get you an answer. Jonathan's going to be monitoring it while I'm going on about all the content, and he's going to let me know if there's anything pertinent. All right, so let's, uh, without further ado, everybody came on this call to get some valuable information. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna go straight into providing valuable information. So the first missing link in I, what, I, what I at least believe to be a successful and, and scalable membership site is customer onboarding. This often gets overlooked. Uh, most of us focus most of our effort in the pre-customer uh, acquisition process. So pricing page, conversions, outreach, ads, that's where the bulk of our time and effort goes. And we often, customer onboarding is an afterthought. They're like, oh, we already got the customer. We don't need to do any more work. Uh, uh, when building Groundhog, uh, we found that customer onboarding was probably the most labor intensive and, and the most effective process for creating uh, long-term lifetime customers and, and scalable processes. And we spent a lot of time perfecting our customer onboarding strategy. Uh, and customer onboarding in a lot of cases can actually be super easy. And we're going to start off with implementing a really easy customer onboarding journey uh, that includes a few emails, a few guided setup steps, uh, some content. Uh, and what this is meant to do is it's meant to direct your customer to the relevant places of your membership site so that they can uh, learn what it is that they need to do in order to be successful with your offer. If we just kind of like drop them and there's a whole bunch of content that they need to consume and they don't really know what to do, then that's when people end up leaving or you get lots of support requests because, well, they, they don't have any direction. They signed up and now they're expecting direction. We have to tell them what we do. And this is exactly what we are going to do next. So without further ado, we're going to just jump right into Groundhog. Uh, and hopefully at this point you have Groundhog installed. If you don't, uh, there is a lot of training on how to go about doing that. You can go check out our Getting Started course on Groundhog Academy. Assuming that the prerequisite that you have is that you have it set up, we're going to go and we're going to start creating some funnels. So these are some super easy funnels to get started with. All of the funnels that were actually three out of the four funnels that we're going to be working with today are available from this screen. And the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to build our new subscriber welcome funnel. Now, what this is going to do is if you have a membership plugin or you're doing membership in some other way, as soon as someone creates a user account, they're going to be added to this funnel. So we can go ahead and click on start building and it's actually going to pre-build our funnel for us with a lot of demo email content and it's going to just make it really, really easy to get started. Uh, we're going to delete the subscriber form filled step because we're not going to need it. We're going to be using the uh, new subscriber role simply because in this, uh, in this instance, we are working with membership sites. So when someone uh, becomes a new subscriber or if you have some sort of custom role that you're using for your membership site, you can also select that from here. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to select uh, whatever the role it is you're going to use. 
Uh, and then we have a bunch of stuff here. Uh, we apply a tag general mailing list. This is going to be useful later when you want to send an email to everybody. We are then going to do something. We're going to send a confirmation email. Uh, now, this isn't necessarily required. If you're in Canada or in Europe, I would highly recommend taking this step. What this is going to do is it's going to retrieve explicit consent for this person to receive marketing information in the future. This is going to be critical for the other funnels that we're going to be working with that send lots of emails over time. So make sure that we are collecting explicit consent. If you're in America, this is not necessarily required, but it is good practice. And if you're in America marketing outside of America, that means you have customers in Canada and Europe, then you still need to be compliant with this process. So you're going to want to make sure that you have your confirmation email set up. So we're going to send our confirmation email. Uh, and it has lots of content for us to get started. We don't really need to do a whole lot here. Essentially, we are just going to tweak the email to be contextually similar to whatever it is that they sign up for, in this case, membership. So we might want to say, uh, thank you for becoming a Groundhog member. I'm just going to use my own business name as an example. Thank you for becoming a Groundhog member. We know you're going to love it. We're we know you're going to get tons of value. We're only going to send you email that you enjoy. If you don't enjoy it, you can always unsubscribe. Uh, but we need to make sure that we start off on the right foot. Please confirm your email address so we can, you know, you, you give us consent, explicit consent to uh, send you any email. And that's it. Once you're done, you're officially part of the family. You can go ahead and you can tweak this email, but essentially this is all you really need to get started in terms of a confirmation. You might want to uh, add your business name here just so that they know. And if you want, you can use the square brackets to make it look transactional. You're going to send whoever, or you're going to want to select who you're going to want to send it from, mark the email as ready, and then you're going to go ahead and update that email. So this email is now ready to go. And now once anybody confirms their email by clicking that confirmation link, they're going to get brought down here. And this is when we are going to start the uh, customer onboarding process officially. They've confirmed their email. Now what we do is we want over a series of days to guide them towards the various aspects of your membership site. Again, we don't just want to drop people in and expect that they're going to know what to do. If we expect them, if we expect that, we're going to be sorely disappointed because most people just need to be told what to do next. We are incredibly busy. Uh, we have lots of distractions going on in our lives as human beings, you know, Facebook pings and mother calling and, you know, sales are down, sales are up, ads are, funnels are breaking, you know, we're busy people. What we need to do is we need to explicitly instruct uh, the various steps of the customer onboarding process so that people can adequately and uh, easily follow along and actually consume the product successfully. And that this is where this starts. So after this email confirm step, we're going to create a series of emails. So the first one we're going to do is our welcome email. Uh, this one is a really easy one. It just says, let's get acquainted. Basically it's a familiar introductory uh, it lets them know who you are, what you do, what they can expect from your company, what kind of things that you're going to help them with. There's some demo content here. Uh, so first off, we're so happy to have you be part of uh, the Groundhog community. It's a real honor. Before we start sending you anything else, I think we should get acquainted. My name is Adrian. Uh, we started Groundhog to uh, help small businesses launch their funnel, grow their list, and scale their business. Now that you know a bit of us, let's get started. The first thing that you absolutely do now that you're a member is insert them for thing to do. Now, uh, for LMS sites, this might be take an introductory course. Uh, this would be, for example, in our own onboarding process, which most of you have probably gone through, the first thing that we ask you to do is go join our Facebook group. This is so that you can ask questions, you have a support system. Uh, we know that you're part of our community now and lots of good things happen in the Facebook group, office hours, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the first thing that we usually get people to do. The next thing that we get people to do is to go take our quick start course. So we're gonna do, the first thing you're gonna do as a member is go join our Facebook group. 
Going to go ahead and mark that as ready. Go ahead and update it. And there we go. Now I suggest sending a onboarding email at least once a day for seven days. Uh, the reason you want to do this is you want to create consistency in messaging. And you're basically at that point training your customer to be accustomed to seeing your email every day over seven days. You can do longer, you can do shorter. If you want to do every two days over 14 days, that's fine. But what you want to do is you want to create consistency so that they're not surprised or they don't ignore your email when they see it in the inbox. By creating consistency early, you're setting the expectation so that when they don't see your email, they're actually sad that they don't see it. And they're like, I can't wait for Adrian's email to come in and let me know what to do next. So that is why we wanna do consistent uh, daily emails or consistent by daily emails over the first however many onboarding days. So I'm gonna add a timer here. Let's go ahead and add a delay timer. We're gonna set it for one day, just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a new email. Just gonna go ahead and create a new one. And this email is essentially going to do the next call to action or the next thing that they need to do. Uh, in our current onboarding process, which I shared, uh, we are directed into our academy course so that they can learn how to launch their first lead magnet download funnel. You can get creative with your uh, subject lines. This is just something that I thought of off the cuff. What you need to do today, launch your first funnel. Uh, you, can create, you can create consistent branding for your onboarding series, whatever works for you. Uh, the one that we use at Groundhog is we just have onboarding. So it really sets the expectation of what this email is actually about and just says onboarding, you know, this is what you're gonna do today. And we have that go out over eight or nine days or something. So onboarding, launch your first funnel. And then the content is obviously welcome to day two. Today we are going to launch your first funnel. Go register for this course at URL and launch your funnel within the hour. Something like that, explicit call to action, uh, give them a time frame. Time frame is super important. So you don't wanna choose things that are going to take like four hours because no one wants to commit four hours of their day to an onboarding practice. So an hour is like the maximum amount of time commitment that I would suggest. So break things up into hour time commitments and that way you're gonna get a lot more engagement with what you're actually sending out and people are more likely to actually engage with it and consume that content. Um, but always, always, always show time commitment in the email, launch your funnel within the hour. That is a very, very low time commitment. Uh, the Facebook group, you know, don't go join, join the Facebook group, it's only gonna take a few minutes or go leave a review, it's only gonna take a few minutes, right? And all of our onboarding emails, we always have an explicit time commitment. And that way people can justify, it's like, yeah, I have time to do that. I might as well just do it right now because that's what we want. Because if they say, I'm gonna do that later, you lost them. They're not going to engage with that email because again, we are busy people, we have tons of stuff going on. Uh, and the attention span is low these days. So time commitment and clear CTA. I know a lot of some other companies also jam like 13 things to do into a single email. Don't do that, right? One call to action, one explicit call to action, one thing to do per email spread over an amount of days. It makes it manageable, makes it easy. And again, it creates that consistency and sets the expectation for the amount of communication that they should expect to receive in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this one as ready. Onboarding dat two, that should say day two, but I'm gonna move on. Close. And then we basically just get to do this for as many things as we have to do. So in a membership site, it would be join the Facebook or it would be go take this first course. It would be uh, go configure your profile. Let's do that one. Uh, that's a really easy one to do. And then we'll move on to the next funnel. So wait one day. 
we're going to add a new step, send an email, create a new email. Day three, create or uh, finish your profile. This is something that people often forget to do, especially if you're on like a Buddy Boss website or on uh, Buddy Press or, or whatever the forum one is. Uh, and people have profiles that they need to edit. This is often a step that's missed. So let's go finish their profile. You can make this step two as well if you want. And essentially same thing. Day three, please go finish your profile. Link to profile. It will only take a few minutes. Remembering to insert that time commitment because we want to make sure that uh, their um, expectation of the time it's going to take is low so that they do it now instead of saying, oh, I'm going to get to that later because that's just not going to happen. Go ahead and make that as ready and create. Now I'm only, I'm going to stop here at three emails and do a little bit of questions. Um, and, but you can go on for as many emails as you need to. Our onboarding process has nine, I think. And those are just to direct them to the various different places of Groundhog for that they need to know to get started. Facebook group, academy, office hours, documentation, support, review, et cetera, et cetera. Where to get your license keys, all of that good stuff. So hopefully this makes sense. If you have questions, now is the time to put those in the Q&A, and there are a couple questions. Uh, so Jonathan, why don't you go ahead and, uh, and read those questions out? You're muted, Jonathan. There you go. I'm sorry about that. I've got a couple questions from Tamara. Is the new user subscriber role already the default in the template for the funnel in Groundhog? Yes, it is. So when you... Uh, add the new subscriber funnel in there. It comes with the new user as well as the form filled. Uh, both of those will actually start the funnel, but for this particular scenario, you're not gonna need the web form one. So I just deleted it, but it was actually already there. Uh, you can also add it into any funnel at any point uh, using the new user benchmark, which should be right here, right at the top. So hopefully that answers your question, Tamara. Right, and I've got one from Dennis. It, um, is this just, uh, for new customers, what about leads and nurturing? So typically for an onboarding funnel, you're only going to want to use it for new customers because if they're an existing customer, the, the idea is that they'd already know a bunch of this stuff. However, if you have zero customer onboarding and you've been collecting customers over the last little while and all of them don't know what to do, then it may be a good idea to add them into a customer onboarding funnel retroactively Although if they're already a customer, you may also want to do it like uh, getting on a webinar kind of like this and doing a personalized walkthrough and saying, hey, listen, everybody, this is actually how this stuff works. So it's up to you. Typically for the onboarding funnel, we are only going to be using that for new registrants. We are going to about to go into a couple funnels that are for pre-existing customers in order to make sure that engagement and retention and, and that kind of stuff happens. So stay tuned for that, Dennis. Thank you for your questions. Remember everybody, uh, this is a Q and A friendly webinar. So just go ahead and post your questions in the Q and A section. Uh, there are a couple in chat there. Uh, Jonathan, what's the one from Louie there? Louie, all right, I can't. Uh, right at the end. All right, um, how, how you separate users from, from new to already train or create different lists? So uh, Louis, for this particular funnel, um, and for anybody who did not hear the question, because you were a little bit muffled there, Jonathan, right. uh, how you separate users from new to already trained. So how do you make sure that only new registers are, are getting into this funnel, or you can segment people who are in this funnel from otherwise not. So what you can do in that case, Louis, is, well, first of all, only new users will enter this funnel. So when people get the, or become a subscriber, that's when they enter this funnel. Other than that, they won't be able to enter this funnel again unless they delete their account and then re-sign up, okay? So that's the only way that they'll be able to get into this funnel. Next, 
Uh, if you want to separate people who are in this funnel from people who are not, uh, then what you can do is you can do add a tag and let's just call it active onboarding. So this means they are active in the onboarding funnel. Uh, we can go ahead and save that. And then at the end of the funnel, so after the last uh, onboarding email, we can go ahead and we can remove that tag. So remove tag and uh, active onboarding. And that way, if we want to segment or send an email or reference anybody who is currently in the onboarding funnel, this is how we'd be able to do that. Hopefully that answers your question, Louis, and thank you for raising that question. All right, let's go ahead and let's move on. So that's targeting how to properly onboard your customers. Why? Because we don't want to just drop them into a membership site, blank slate, and they have no idea what to do. They need guidance. You need to tell them what to do, where to go, because we're busy and we have a short ascension span and that's just the way that we have to do that. So uh, next common problem, people log in, they go through the onboarding process, it's all handy dandy. 14 days later, something happens and they forget about it and they don't log in, right? And you, there's a long pause or there's, there's long breaks in between when people actually are logging into your membership site to view your content and, and uh, interact with it, right? We want to prevent the login from being longer than let's say seven days. We want people coming in at least once per week, for example, maybe once per month, depending on exactly what kind of content it is that you're producing. So we have a very, very, very simple funnel to do that. Uh, this will require that you have the advanced features extension uh, with the login benchmark. And we actually have a funnel template for it. It's called login abandonment. It's right at the top here. Let's go ahead and click on start building. And this is a really easy funnel to implement uh, for LMS, for membership, for e-commerce, for any kind of website that requires a login process in order to consume content. This is just a real great way to increase engagement like overnight. So the way that it works is someone logs in uh, and we have it set to logs in at any point. Uh, so this is going to be an infinitely recurring funnel uh, for everybody on your site always. Uh, you can also select to a number of times. So let's say they log in once, they log in three times, they log in for their fourth time. So if you want to send maybe a notice or send an offer the third time they logged in, you'd, you'd use this benchmark here. But we're going to set it to any time so that it's infinitely recurring. We are going to wait seven days because you know they just logged in and we don't need to send them anything right now. But what we are going to do is we're going to wait seven days. And if they haven't logged in a second time, we are going to send them an email asking, hey, what's up? You haven't logged in in seven days. So the way that the funnel, the funnel works is that if they log in again uh, during that seven day wait period, they're actually just going to get moved back to the top of the funnel and they're going to restart that seven day delay timer so that they don't receive the is everything okay email. They're not going to receive that uh, for every time that they log in. So if, uh, if they log in, seven days pass, we are going to send this email. We're going to ask them, is everything okay? Uh, we're going to say, we haven't seen you a week. Is everything okay? It's been a while since you logged in. Uh, and big call to action button that says, go log in now. Because we want to see you and you need to come back and consume your content. You can tweak this email content to be a little bit more uh, converty or salesy or depending on the, your niche and your audience. Um, but essentially, the main CTA is go back and log in to continue consuming content. We can go ahead and mark that as ready. Update. Close that. Uh, we're going to wait an additional three days. So for if any reason that email didn't work and it didn't cause them to log in, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to send a second email that says, come back, we miss you. It's essentially more or less the same content, just tweaked because it's the second email. Let's go ahead and mark that as ready. Go ahead and update. This link, by the way, the button just goes to the login page. Nothing special there. And you can essentially continue to send emails until they re-log in. And then the next time that they log in, the whole process restarts. And that way you have a, a, a infinitely recurring funnel that is going to constantly keep members engaged and constantly remind members that you exist. Because if they forget, then guess what? They're gonna go on their credit card statement and they're going to see the monthly bill and they're going to say, I don't even know what that is. 
you know, and they're going to do chargeback or they're going to cancel through their gateway or they're going to do all sorts of nasty things that you really don't want. Oh, that, that's a fantastic funnel. Thanks so much for showing that, Adrian. It's, it's honestly one of the easiest ones to implement uh, on this webinar today and one of the most effective uh, for constantly keeping people engaged and uh, preventing chargebacks and refunds and cancellations because it keeps you top of mind. And it also make it, it kind of makes customers feel guilty as well because they're like, I signed up and especially if it's like um, a self-improvement program or a professional improvement, professional development program, they feel guilty that they haven't actually been consuming the content. So they're actually therefore more inclined to continue because they're thinking, I'm gonna get to it, I'm gonna get to it, I'm gonna get to it, I'm gonna get to it. And uh, because they want the results that were originally promised. And, and this is an excellent funnel for just making sure that that happens and that no chargebacks, chargebacks are bad. I'm going to take a moment for questions. Do we have any? Um, there, was, there was a couple. Um, how you separate users, how you separate users from new um, I answer. I think I answered that question. Oh, you think you answered that one? Yeah. Right. Right, yeah I think that was just the, the newest one we've had, actually. Uh, there's a couple in the Q&A section. I see one from Tamara. Oh, right. Sorry. Tamara asks, I have my membership site using Buddy Boss on a separate site for my site where Groundhog is installed. Can it work for this funnel across two separate sites? Yes, it can. Uh, you're going to have to get a little bit creative with how that works though. So there's a couple of plugins that you might want to investigate. There's one called Uncanny Automator. Uh, and what you can do is when someone logs in, you can send a webhook request to Groundhog. Uh, Groundhog has a nifty benchmark called the webhook listener, uh, where you can use a special URL. It will essentially listen for contact information and then start the funnel. So you're going to have to get a little bit creative with it. Unfortunately, I'm not going to have enough time to get into the nitty gritty of it on this call, but it is possible if you're using Groundhog on a separate hosted site. I see a question from Dennis as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dennis we, asks. Yeah, oh, about ahead. people being frustrated, constantly seeing the same email. Is there a way to vary the emails, i.e. recent content published, recent activity? Blah, blah, blah. That's certainly a valid concern, Dennis. And I guess it really depends on your type of customer. Uh, this this, this uh, email sequence is not for everybody, obviously. And I can certainly see some people being like, I really don't want to see. That's what the unsubscribe button is for. And you can also utilize our advanced uh, email preferences center. Uh, where you have tags where they can opt in or opt out of certain sequences. So maybe you would add a tag that says um, a login reminders that they could uh, explicitly opt out of to stop receiving those login reminders if they, oh, if they right. don't want those anymore. Any so that would be a potential solution. Instead of just like blanket unsubscribing, you could have a specific tag for login reminders and they could opt out of that explicitly. So that might be a potential solution to that problem. You can vary the content just by going in there and updating it from time to time, spreading out the uh, reminders occasionally. Uh, you can use uh, the custom preferences, uh, the advanced custom replacements extension to vary the replacements or vary the content from time to time from the replacements area. There's lots of ways that you could do that. Um, not enough, not, there's too many to really get into the nitty gritty on this call. Um, but those are some options available to you. So hopefully that uh, answers your question, Dennis. Yes, and Tamria, it was Uncanny Automator. Yes. And it's Uncanny it was Owl. It's Uncanny Owl Automator. That's what um, we've been talking about. A fabulous product, Adrian. Yeah, we did a, we did a webinar with them last week or yeah, last week on Thursday, it went really, really well to Mara. So if you want to go check that out, that's currently available in the Facebook group as well as on YouTube. Uh, so maybe Jonathan, if you could go find the YouTube link from the Groundhog YouTube channel, just send that to her. Yeah. Uh, that would be super helpful. So yeah, sure. we're going to get you that link to Mara. All right. I'm going to move on swiftly and uh, keep going. Actually, there's one more question from Sanjay and Sanjay asks, do you need Groundhog installed as a subdomain so WordPress database doesn't get too big? No, you don't. Groundhog is very lightweight. It keeps all of the tables separate. We have Groundhog ourselves installed on our main e-commerce site. 
no issues, especially if you have like decent hosting. We use uh, Google Cloud Hosting, no issues. And uh, we have very, 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 very few people complaining about any sort of database bloat. We have some seriously large sites using Groundhog. So that is not something you need to worry about, Sanjay. Okay, so we're at 35 minutes. Hopefully we have enough time to get to uh, all four, but we're, let's move on to number three. Let's talk about maximizing engagement. Uh, there's lots of ways that you can do or that you can maximize engagement. I'm going to focus on a specific one. So whenever we add new content, we want to let them know that it's been posted uh, and keep members informed of upcoming events. Uh, if you're familiar with Groundhog, you're familiar with what I'm about to talk about. Uh, if you're not, this is essentially going to be your a newsletter functionality or broadcast functionality that I'm going to start talking about. So one of the things that we get to do in Groundhog is we automatically map certain members to uh, specific tags or rather specific roles to specific tags. So I'm going to exit out of here and let's go see our tags and we should have a subscriber one somewhere. I might have to add a new user for that. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new user. Uh, let's go ahead and name this person new user. Uh, we are going to skip the email confirmation process. We're going to add this person as a subscriber and go ahead and add that person as a new user. So now when we go to the contacts, we see that that contact exists and they have the subscriber tag that's referencing their user role that they were added with. So if you have like a customer role or you have like a pro member role or however your membership system works, they will automatically get tagged with the name of that role that they have. So when we go to our broadcast tool and we want to send out an email and I'm just going to select a random email for the sake of it, we can go ahead and reference that specific user role via the tags. So I can go ahead and choose subscriber. So that way, if you have people on your list who might be members or who might be not members, this is a really easy way to say, hey, let's group all of our members together and send them specific content that may not be relevant for whoever. The type of content that we might want to send varies. Uh, some of the content that I find super helpful to do is whenever we add new content or new courses to Groundhog Academy, everybody gets an email that says, hey, listen, this exists. You should go take it. Here's how you get signed up. Here's how you get started. So let's go ahead and we'll go through an example of what an email like that might look like. So we have a new course on Groundhog called the Ultimate Review Generator Funnel. Uh, so after this webinar, maybe go uh, consider taking that. Um, let's just go grab the link for that real quickly. So Ultimate Review Generator Funnel. Let's go ahead and copy that link address. So our subject line would be something along the lines of need to get more five-star reviews, start with an engaging question. That way, it, starts the curiosity and people says, I have that problem. I want more five star reviews. I'm assuming this email is going to have some kind of answer for me. So hi first, as part of your membership, you've just been granted access to this new course. It will, oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> It will help you do the following. And I'm assuming you're going to write a much better email than I am with proper grammar. Get more reviews, collect uh, better feedback, turn uh, detractors into promoters. There we go. So something like that would be a really easy way to, oh, I need an, e I need an email. Uh, just call it course promo. 
So something like this would be a really easy way to notify all of your members that you have a new course coming up or you have a new course currently available. Uh, when you add it, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select our subscriber tag. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna just send that out now or we can schedule it sometime into the future. Go ahead and click schedule. Oh, it's in draft mode, so I can't, but imagine that it went through and that it was totally successful. Do we have any questions in about- keep an eye, I don't see any. But I don't see any either, so good. We're gonna to keep on trucking forward. So this is how you would schedule a broadcast to all of your members. Now on the flip side, let's say you have people on your list who aren't members yet. Let's say uh, the way that we can do that is if we go to our contacts area, we do search. Uh, we want to select anybody on our list who is currently not a member. So we're just going to exclude people who have the subscriber tag. Let's go ahead and click search. Uh, we can add this as a save search, call them not a member. Save that search. And then we want to send an email to everybody on our list who is not a member. Uh, let's do course promo. And let's imagine that the course promo says something like this course was just added, become a member to get access. Now we can then select from our save search, not a member and go ahead and go through the scheduling process the same way. Uh, so really easy ways to segment your members so you can consistently engage with them with exciting new content. Um, other people prefer to automate this process by creating a long-term nurture funnel. Uh, we have an example of that as well. So if we go to add new, uh, we have long-term nurture. And essentially this is a funnel where you'd add uh, members at any point. Um, it's really kind of like a catch-all nurture process to consistently send them articles, content, courses, YouTube videos. It's, it's really a catch-all to just automate the, the nurture and the content delivery process. You can go ahead and you can add additional emails whenever you add additional content, you can tweak the content, whatever, but just think of it as kind of like the big net that catches both members uh, and both uh, customers or, or pre-customers, I guess, leads at that point and nurture them to the point where they either make a buying decision or an upgrade decision or just a loyal customer decision. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and uh, feel free to ask any questions. I'm gonna give it a 30 second pause to let everybody kind of catch up. And if there are no questions within the 30 seconds, uh, we're at the 42 minute mark. And I think that's just enough time to talk about the last funnel, the last bonus funnel, which is how do we recapture customers that are canceling? Got a question from Paul. Uh, I run a weekly webinar. Is it possible to duplicate a funnel each week uh, to register folk? Um, you could duplicate it. Uh, it's actually the duplication process is fairly easy. There's literally just a duplicate link uh, right there. And if you click that, it'll duplicate all of the emails. It'll duplicate all of the steps with all of the same configuration. And you can go ahead and you can go edit those emails uh, and without editing the ones in the previous funnel. That is one way that you can do that. Alternatively, you can do kind of like the recurring funnel thing. So I'm not going to go super dive into that because that's not the focus of today's webinar and I want to get to the last, last, last funnel. Uh, but setting up a recurring webinar would look something like uh, using the advanced field timer or yeah, the advanced fields timer. So you could base it on custom fields and uh, using the replacement codes option to conditionally replace the date. Uh, that way you only have to change a few settings without duplicating the funnel each and every time. It kind of depends on how much time you have and what you want your workflow to look like. Setting up the recurring funnel is a little more advanced and a little bit more complex than just duplicating the funnel and changing the settings. Um, but that, that might be a workflow that you want to explore uh, just, as a, just as a side note. Hopefully, Paul, that gives you a little bit of insight. Uh, Danis asks, can you track visits of particular pages and send emails that continue the conversation? If so, does this uh, have to, does the lead have to be logged in? Yes, you can. And no, they don't have to be logged in, but they do need to have a tracking cookie. Uh, so if I open up our long-term nurture funnel here, oh, actually, I'm just going to add a new one. 
start from scratch. Let's say you want to start a funnel when someone visits a specific page. Uh, then what you would do is you would add a benchmark and you're going to use this page visited benchmark. Uh, you could do partial match or exact match. Uh, and then whenever someone visits a page that matches the URL or a partial URL in there, it'll start this funnel and, uh, and send any of the email sequences. This funnel will be triggered if they click a link in an email, they submit a form or they are logged in. So those are all ways that they can get their contact tracking cookie. Uh, and that is what's going to inform Groundhog that they actually were visited that page. Uh, the tracking cookie lasts a few days. Uh, so it, they get it and then leave and then come back there. It's likely that it will still remain active unless they clear their cookies or anything like that. Uh, so we answered that. We answered that. Uh, Tamara asks, do you have something like this for sending text messages? Yes, SMS is supported by Groundhog. You can integrate it with Twilio, AWS, or SMS 77. Uh, so you can use the exact same process, just use the SMS action instead of the email action. What about um, the law firm? If you have a law firm, can each lawyer have their own list, funnels, et cetera? Yes, they can. You'd have to provide them the role of um, sales representative in Groundhog. And this would essentially limit them to only viewing their own contacts within Groundhog. And it would also limit their access to the rest of WordPress as well. Uh, you can configure that using a couple of plugins, uh, mainly user role editor. If you wanted to utilize that, you'd be able to uh, limit their access to the rest of WordPress. Hopefully that answers your question, Louis, but basically yes. Uh, Louis also has another question. Can you, can you create unlimited tags for unlimited member levels? Yes, there is no limit on the number of tags that you can create. Uh, there are websites using Groundhog that have literally thousands of tags. I'm not sure why anyone would ever want to do that. <laughs> I prefer to keep it a little bit simpler than that, but yes, you, there's, there's no limit on the amount of tags that you can and, create. Um, Tamara is asking, can you repeat those last couple SMS tools you said that could send out? Uh, so Twilio, AWS, uh, so Amazon Web Services, and SMS 77, which is a European provider. Um, those are all of the available SMS integrations at the moment. Uh, for more information on SMS, we actually just have it listed on our website. Uh, the, all of those have come part of the pro plan. Uh, and we also have a dedicated SMS extension that needs to be installed to support it. If you have additional questions about that tomorrow, by the way, because I do want to move on and get to the rest of the funnels, yeah. Yeah, feel free to just message our page and get us on live chat. We're also going to have an additional Q&A section at the end of this call. Okay, moving on swiftly. Let's talk about the one that everybody actually wants to hear about. And how do we reclaim canceled members? Like, wh how's that process work? So if someone canceled their subscription, how do we, you know, reach out to them and continue the conversation so that it's not just canceled and we're never going to talk to you again? I'm a huge fan of uh, trying and doing our best to maintain an open and healthy customer relationship even after a refund happens. Groundhog has like a 33% uh, refund rec reclamation rate which means that within six months, 33% of those people who were refunded actually become a customer again and end up paying more the second time. So I'm a huge fan of the process that I'm about to share with you. I'm a huge fan of just keeping the door open and not saying, you know, you want a refund, go to hell. We don't, we don't want to do that. We want, we want to say no hard feelings and here are the process to re-become a customer when you actually realize that the decision you made was probably not in your best interest. So let's get into it. Uh, so, Typically what happens is when you become, or your membership site, when someone cancels, their user access is revoked. Uh, so that means that the tag that they would have gotten for being a subscriber is removed. So that's gonna give us what we need in order to start the cancellation process. There is no uh, uh, template for this available here. Uh, so I'm just gonna build it from scratch. It's different for every site. So let's go ahead. We're going to take a benchmark and we're going to do use our tag removed benchmark. Tag removed. And we are going to select our subscriber tag. Uh, again, this would be based on the role that your members actually have. 
So you may want to use a different process for different user roles and you basically just select the tag that would be relevant for that. We are going to uh, maybe add a tag that says they're canceling or canceled. I didn't want that says canceling. We are going to use a delay timer. We do not want to send the email out right away because they might've canceled by accident or they may immediately regret their decision. So the stuff that we a message send them is not gonna be relevant. So we're gonna to wanna to wait a few hours to let the, the cancellation actually sink in and establish itself. So delay timer and let's wait a couple hours. We're gonna wait two hours. Uh, we're then going to send an email that basically says, you know, what gives? <laughs> uh, uh, that one's for later. So we want to basically ask, you know, why are you canceling? It's always good to ask for feedback. Uh, and they might not even realize that they canceled. Maybe they just like click something in PayPal and they didn't realize. Uh, so we're just going to come out. We're not going to come out guns blazing. We're just gonna be like, you know, why are you canceling? You decided not to renew your membership this month or this year, depending on uh, what kind of billing system you decided to go with. We'd like to know what caused you to make this, to make the decision to leave behind. And this is where you're going to do a couple things. So the cancellation email is uh, kind of like a threefold process. Number one, it gets them to actually resubscribe. Uh, and the way that it does that is it's going to get them or remind them of all of the things that they're actually losing by canceling. You know, if there's anything humans hate, it's loss. Uh, humans are more powered by loss aversion than they are gaining anything. So you could, you could say to someone, you know, you can have a million dollars or you could avoid losing a hundred dollars. And most people will say, well, I don't want to lose a hundred dollars. And that'll have a higher conversion rate than saying you could have a million dollars. Crazy. So we want to use loss version to our benefit here and saying by canceling, you've just lost access to all of these different things uh, that can help you achieve a goal that you actually want in the first place. So you're believing higher, uh, leaving behind uh, unlimited access to all the goodies. Uh, you're leaving behind uh, one on one support. You're leaving behind uh, the easiest way to achieve X results, et cetera, et cetera. Put in your value proposition there. Uh, it should be relatively easy to come up with a couple of loss aversion specifics. And that way, uh, we can then give them a process to actually provide feedback. Reply to this email to let us know your reasoning and if they and this is where we actually get them to go back and, and resubscribe if you want to keep your access so you can launch your funnel grow your list and scale your business click here to resubscribe. If I can spell. <laughs> Subscribe. There we go. And then that would be a link to your checkout process or a special link to resubscribe or, or however you want to do that. Uh, you may want to tack on a uh, coupon code. I find 30% is kind of like the, the industry standard for cancellation recl reclamation. So if you resubscribe within the next three hours, you can get 30% off your next X months. Now, some people would choose to do an auto-generated uh, auto discount here. 
Uh, I would actually not, I would use a consistent discount because that way you can track the number of people that actually use that code. And it just makes looking at the statistics easier. So let's say like canceled 30 is your code. Use at checkout. And that is your reclamation cart or, or subscription cancellation email. So here you're going to put your link. Link goes here. Link also goes here. And then link also goes where the discount code is. If they click on the discount code directly. So let's go ahead and mark this one as ready, ready to go out. Uh, just to recap, we are going to just say, hey, listen, we noticed you subscribed, no hard feelings. We'd love to know the reason you decided to leave behind all of the loss aversion stuff, all of the benefits that they're leaving behind. Uh, just reply to let us know your reasoning. If you decide that after reading this email, you actually made a grave error in judgment, here are the instructions to resubscribe immediately. And if you decide to take action now, because we only work with people who like to take action, then you can use the following discount code to get 30% off your renewal. There we go. Let's go ahead and save that. And we are really running out of time quickly, but essentially the way that this works now is you do timer, email, timer, email, timer, email, basically until they resubscribe or they tell you to F off. <laughs> that's, uh, that's basically how this funnel works. I would limit it to three. Uh, and they go in this order. So we do that, that we do that original one where it says resubscribe. Uh, we, the second one is you have one day left to claim 30% off your renewal fee, which is just a reminder that we offered them that thing in the first place. They might not have seen the original email. So we send them a reminder that says you have one day left to claim this. And then the last email that you send has no offer. It just says no hard feelings. If you decide that you actually want to continue in the future, our door will remain open to you. Feel free to contact or support to resubscribe at any time. Uh, and we essentially just want to continue supporting you. And we hope that in the future, you continue to reach use Groundhog or reach use your membership or, or whatever. And it's basically just like a, you know, it was nice knowing you email. Thanks for the, you know, thanks for the roses. And that is the order of the cancellation email. All right, I'm going to do questions quickly because we are going to run over time here. And I want to stay as close to an hour as possible. Um, and it doesn't actually look like I have any questions here. So we're going to move on swiftly. Okay. So to recap, to save yourself time, money, sanity by using lighting, uh, marketing automation, you can take care of a few simple things for your membership site. You can provide a well-designed onboarding process that will inform customers of what to do and actually how to consume your content. You won't have to struggle to keep people engaged and to train people on how to use your membership sites. You will be able to stay in constant communication with your customers, keeping top of mind to make sure people don't see charges on their credit card that they're not aware of. And you'll be able to reclaim canceled customers easier and uh, keep the door open to their business in the future, which is a nice bonus. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, obviously, with what you can do uh, with Groundhog and your membership software. There are a ton of plugins that will extend Groundhog's functionality and that you can utilize Groundhog 4, like LearnDash or Lifter, WP Fusion, Uncanny, there's just like tons of stuff. And I only really scratched the surface of some of the cool automation that you can do. I certainly covered, I think the most important ones and the most essential ones, uh, but there are other things that you can do in order to ensure uh, your membership site is as profitable as possible. Alrighty. So for those of you on the call, there is an offer for today, as I told you that there would be in the email and I am a generous person in general, and I like to make sure that, that people get a lot of value. So the value train will continue for the next, for anybody on this call, we are currently offering uh, one of our promotions that we offer rarely. It is the two years get one free offer. Essentially what this is, is if you pay for two years of events, we'll give you a three year valid license. So this means that you get the cost of three years, which would be $1,440 USD. Uh, if you decide to take action and continue with Groundhog or to get your pro plan, if you don't have one already, you can do so for 960 and get a three year long-term license, which is essentially equivalent to 33% off. 
the link to claim that offer is written right there. It's uh, groundhog.gg uh, forward slash three year deal. This is for the pro version of Groundhog. This is for the pro license. Uh, so go ahead and type that in. I'm going to share this link in the chat. Uh, copy link. There we go. So that is available in the chat. If you just want to go ahead and click on that and that will bring you directly to the checkout uh, with the three year deal in the cart. If you already have a plan, you already subscribed, uh, you are not going to be left out. So if you already have the pro plan or maybe a lesser plan, you can actually upgrade to the pro plan uh, from your account area. We've gone ahead and we've added this plan to the upgrades area of the licenses. So go to groundhog.io forward slash account forward slash licenses. And there will be a link uh, under your license where you can say view upgrades and the three year deal will, will be listed there until the end of the day. And that is where you'll be able to go and upgrade to this. You'll pay the prorated fee. So whatever you've already paid less uh, this fee. So if you already bought the, the pro plan for $480, then you'd get the three year deal for $480, which I think is pretty sweet. Uh, and you get that for three years. So it's like renewing in advance. So that is currently available. Uh, and that is how you go claim that. Uh, what do you want to do? We have got one new question. Uh, he, no, I'm saying is the link didn't come through. It looks like it's working for me. So uh, Noam, if you're having any issues, you can uh, message our Facebook page and we will get you sorted out because obviously we wanna make sure that this offer is accessible to everybody on the call today. All right, I'm gonna leave this on the screen and uh, we'll take a few more questions. So, Jonathan? Oh yeah, um, does, it's from Paul, does Groundhog integrate with any webinar platform for one click reg, reg, registration. I'm currently using Demio. Um, I mean, I, so I, I personally haven't created any integrations for that. Uh, for our webinar platform, we just use Zoom because it's easy and I don't really have to worry about too much about it. I'm always a fan of doing uh, what gets the best results for the least amount of effort. <laughs> Uh, and Zoom is very low effort for me, and that's why we use it as our webinar platform, although it doesn't have the whole one-click registration thing. I mean, what I do is for anybody on the list, I just leave the registration option optional so that, because I just blast the list and say, hey, listen, this is happening now. Click here to join, and then they join, and then that's just really easy. So that would be my one thing to say about it. I've never used Demio personally. Um, if they have a groundhog integration, that's cool. You may also want to look at like something like Zapier if they're not available. Uh, webhooks, most platforms, most SaaS platforms now offer webhook functionality. So you want to might check if they have webhooks uh, because we have stuff like the webhook listener and the webhook action in order to, to make utilizing webhooks between multiple softwares really, really easily. Hopefully that provides you a little bit of direction. I'm sorry if I didn't answer your question explicitly. If you want to get a little bit more technical about it, then what you might want to do is message our page after the fact. Yeah, Cole's saying that he uses Zoom integration um, in WordPress and then it works with um, Groundhog, no problem. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I mean, that's my preferred method is, is Zoom. Uh, I guess Kurt's specifically speaking to the Zoom integration for WordPress, which I think Delicious Brains puts out or, or, or one of the big WordPress. No, it's, um, it's um, another developer. It's another one? Yeah. So, I mean, whichever one it is, apparently that's working well within Groundhog Funnels. I guess for that, you just put the link to the webinar in the email itself or to the yeah. specific WordPress page where the webinar is, and then that works really well. So that's awesome, especially if they're already logged in. So if it's just streaming to that page, they don't need to actually be logged in, I guess. Um, so Kurt, thank you for bringing that up. That's a, that's a super valuable way to do it. Uh, Paul says, great content. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Paul. Uh, Dennis says, thanks so much. It was super helpful. I'm glad we were able to help you out, Dennis. Uh, we are five minutes over time here, so I think 30 seconds left for questions, and if not, we're going to uh, cut the, the webinar. Uh, Sanjay is asking recording for this. Yes, Jonathan is going to make the recording available. Uh, this is also currently being streamed to my Facebook page as well as the WP Tonic uh, page on Facebook. And, yeah, and we'll be able to um, watch the recordings there. 
Um, when it comes to viewing, um, I'm going to put it on the WP Tonic site. I'll send a link to everybody that's been on this webinar. Also, I'll make sure that um, Adrian's got a copy of it and he can put it on his YouTube channel if he wants. I'm going to be putting it on my on the WP Tonic YouTube channel. So there'll be a lot of places to view the webinar because I think it's been fantastic. I think you've done a fantastic job, Adrian. I, I think you've really shown the power of Groundhog and how easy it is. Um, obviously, you're a master of your own product, but compared to some other um, systems, how easy it is to start integrating some great um, automations connected to a membership site and showing how you can make a real difference. I think everything we said we were going to do in this webinar, we've achieved it with your help, Adrian. Thank you I so think much. So. I think, I think we covered a lot of ground today. So for anybody on this call who has a membership site that's currently struggling from some of the core things that memberships struggle from, these are some easy ways to literally just like knock them out in a day and immediately solve a lot of your problems. If you have additional questions that we did not get to on this call, I'm, I apologize in advance for not being able to answer all of them. Uh, you can continue to reach out to us on our Facebook page. You can reach out by email or support ticket, lots of ways to get in touch. Uh, so it's info at groundhog.io. We have live chat on our website, which is groundhogwithtugees.io. Uh, you can also reach out to us on Facebook, which is groundhogwithtugees.io forward slash Facebook or forward slash FB. Jonathan, what's the best way for people to find more about you, what you do, and, and how to get in touch with you? I'll just go to the WP Tonic website. There's plenty of links. Um, if you just want a 30 minute consultation with me about building a learning management system out, of course, um, I um, do that as a free service for people. Um, there's just tons of ways of getting hold of me on the WP Tonic website. And just to mention, we um, hope, we plan to do a series of these webinars in the coming months, me and Adrian. Um, we're going to discuss what topics we're going to be discussing in them. And we hope to show a lot of value to people that are looking or thinking of using Groundhog um, in general, because it's a fantastic product. And thank you so much, Adrian, for agreeing to do that and also coming on today's webinar. Um, takes a, it's not easy doing an effective webinar and Adrian's done a fantastic job. So thank you so much, Adrian. Well, it's my pleasure. Thanks for hosting me. Thank you everyone for taking the time out of your day to join me, uh, to join Jonathan and I. We're really appreciative. Uh, we're gonna do another one of these in the coming future. So stay tuned and I will see everybody soon. And if you're already part of the audience, I'm sure we'll be talking uh, relatively soon. Thank you, everybody. You and uh, have a great day.